That's right. And Jason, one of our colleagues, Liz Collin, actually got a very exclusive look inside of a COVID-19 ward. Liz joining us now. And Liz, we just want to know what it was like to be inside. Well, good morning, you guys. Thank you for having me on this morning. You know, it really was a somber and a sobering overall it's a very sad experience. I think uh, like a lot of us, we have seen this video basically on repeat in many ways for months now, but it really was totally different. It felt so different uh, to see it in person. Uh, these healthcare workers working uh, so hard and these patients just looking helpless. This is an empty bed, um, some video there, but uh, 20 are in the COVID ICU uh, right now at Regions Hospital, 70 are in the other wards, so 90 total in Regions. And uh, we were trying to be delicate with uh, getting some of this video as, you know, I did mention that this helpless feeling in patients' faces, uh, even when they could look up um, and see. And there's sort of this incessant sound of machines that I was struck by uh, walking the hallways, so many cables, cords, rooms filled with IVs, feeding tubes, heart rate monitors. And you can see the IVs are actually kept outside of the room. So these patients are really isolated and that was something else um, I was struck by, again, something that we knew uh, going into this, but it was something else to see them just sealed off and, you know, they were, they were able to work, um, these nurses, so they don't have to do all of the, the garbing up, if you will, um, to be able to do a lot of that work from outside in the hallway, uh, leaving these patients, uh, you know, really for, for hours uh, alone, which was also uh, a sobering scene, I think. Yeah, boy, that's so striking, Liz, because uh, as you said, we know this, but when you think of most uh, people's interaction with the hospital, you think of the hustle and bustle of the nurses and the doctors in and out of the room, family members there, especially if you're uh, with someone in a critical situation. How did we kind of take precautions to be safe inside the hospital? Right, we thought this was such an important perspective to provide for our viewers, but of course we wanted to do it in the safest way possible. So you'll see that uh, some of the interviews we actually were able to um, outside of the hospital with my photojournalist that day, Mark Erb. And then I went into the hospital myself and I actually um, have had COVID-19. Uh, I was very lucky and was asymptomatic. And then I also took the test and found out that I had the an antibodies as well. So I felt very safe and comfortable uh, going into the hospital. Uh, but it was also striking <laughs> after my experience with COVID-19, which was so minimal, barely anything at all and then to see patients um, on you know this other extreme which is really a reminder as to you know what we're dealing with and how difficult uh, this has been in some ways to, to get under control. And Liz we're so glad you're okay. Um, thank you for going inside and doing the story here. You know we've been talking so much about these healthcare workers. This is nine ten months in. How are they holding up? You know, uh, I talked to, to several that day and they all told me they just flat out admitted that they are tired. Uh, I think months ago we, we saw this very brave, uh, stoic face of the healthcare worker, which continues, but they're weary. Uh, it actually was, was interesting. I talked to a patient inside regions who wasn't even worried so much about uh, himself. He was worried about the healthcare workers and he thought we really need to give them more credit um, there was this Dr. Julie Schaefer who we interviewed um, that day. She uh, had went to the U of M uh, to finish up her residency. So this is her first year, um, if you can even imagine, um, outside of that. And she had been trained uh, in hospital medicine and now she has switched to critical care. So a big change for her. She just said, we're tired. Um, we were running on adrenaline in March and April and it's just not, not there anymore. Um, they're trying to, to do the best they can. And, uh, you know, they're making sacrifices as well with their own families, with their kids uh, in homeschool and you know, pivoting it as, as best they can. Um, but even this patient mentioned, um, he'll be a part of our story tonight at 10 o'clock, but people were donating lunches and, and such to these healthcare workers in the beginning in the spring. And a lot of that, um, you know, isn't, isn't there anymore. So I thought that was a good reminder and something that I wanted to share with our viewers, perhaps, um, you know, light this fire again at, I think they need a little bit of a boost right now, especially mm. as the numbers seem to yeah. not be anywhere close to under control at this That's point. That's right. All right, Liz, uh, thanks for breaking this down for us on mid morning. We'll be watching uh, for your stories uh, for sure. The big story tonight at 10. Thanks to you and uh, Mark Herb for uh, giving us that up close look.